This week I'm returning to my weather station example based on the OKDo E1 board and featuring the LPC 55S69 microcontroller from NXP. I'm reading pressure, temperature and humidity from the Bosch BME 280 environmental sensor and I'm reading these via I squared C. I'll show you how to read the calibration and sensor values, poll the measurement in progress status flag and generate the calibrated results. And in a second part to this video, I'll show you how to configure the real-time clock on the OKDo E1 board to generate a one minute interrupt and triggering readings. First, a quick reminder of the BME 280 datasheet and here I have it open at page 27. This shows the registers internal to the BME 280 and in Cyan we can see the calibration data registers. These are formed in an upper and a lower part. In yellow we have the eight result registers. We can see that these contain humidity, temperature and pressure spread through these eight registers. In white we have some control registers. We've got control and configuration and we'll be using the sensor in a one-shot or forced mode and we'll be writing the value 1 to this mode register to trigger a reading. We won't be using any oversampling and so these oversampling fields will be set for no oversampling. While the sensor is converting the data it will be measuring the data and this measuring bit will be set to tell us that a conversion is in progress and we'll poll that until it's clear and we can read the data. The BME 280 sensor takes several milliseconds to perform the analog to digital conversions and we can see that in the graph on page 16. Here we see the sampling process where we'll write mode 1 for forced mode, the temperature and the pressure and the humidity will be measured and we'll be polling for the conversion complete flag to know when the data is ready to be read out. As always, let's start in MCU Expresso. The project that I have open is LPC 55S69 Weather Station, and this is a continuation of the project that we started a few weeks ago when we were learning how to use the I2C driver. Here's an outline of main.c as it is today. It's a very simple one-time reading of the BME 280 sensor. We perform a compensation and calibration, and then output the readings, printfing into the semi-hosting console. At line 604, we perform a read BME 280 calibration. We then configure the sensor at line 605, and then we put the sensor into force mode, which is a one-shot reading of the registers. Once we've triggered a reading, we have to poll the convert complete flag in the sensor until the data is ready. Once the measurement is complete, we call the read BME280 data function to read out the data from the registers of the sensor. Lastly, we perform the compensation and output the results to the semi-hosting console. Now, I don't have time this week to show you every single line of code, so I'll take some of the key functions and show these to you. So as an example of how we use the I2C driver in this project, let's take a look at the function write BME 280 config. So here we are at line 412 and this is based firmly on the I2C driver from the SDK for the OKDo E1 board. In this function we write to the white control registers in the BME 280 and we configure the sensor for no oversampling. Let's just see these white control registers in the datasheet again. We care about two registers. There's the control humidity register at F2, where we write to these oversampling bits, and the control mesh register at address F4, where we're going to write to the oversampling registers for temperature and pressure. In both cases, we populate the transfer struct. It's a write. We're writing to, first of all, the control humidity register at address F2, is one byte that we're writing and we send it as a master. It's a transfer non-blocking 
to the I squared C peripheral. We wait for the transfer to be complete and then we move on and we write to the control measurement register at address F4. It's the same transfer structure, this time writing to the control measure register at F4 and we're sending this write data BME to AT control mesh M, which has been set to value 24 hex. This value just configures for no oversampling in the sensor. The data is sent to the I squared C peripheral and we wait for the acknowledgement flag from the callback. Well, let's now go back to main. Let's first of all look at the code to read the calibration values and that's this function here, read BME 280 calib. The BME 280 stores calibration values in the cyan colored calibration fields. There's an upper field and a lower field and these are all 8-bit values and there's about 40 of them to be read out. But in the compensation routines, we need to have these 8-bit values assembled into different data types. I've got a calibration structure set up here, which has got a mixture of unsigned 16s, signed 16s, and signed 8-bit values. And when we read out the 8-bit values from the I squared C sensor, we then need to assemble them into these data types. And so I read out the calibration values in two phases. First of all, I read the lower half of the calibration data starting from address 88. So calibration is starting at address 88. And there are 26 8-bit registers to read in this first phase. This is a read and we're going to read the 26 values into this buffer read buffer. We use the I squared C master transfer non-blocking function with the transfer struct and we wait for the transfer to be completed. Once it's complete, we just convert the 26 values into the first half of the calibration struct. We then go on to read the upper calibration values starting from address E1. This time, there are 15 values to be read out. And again, we read them into the read buff. Once the transfer is complete, again, we process the 8-bit values and convert them into the BME calibration struct values. Reading of the sensor is done in three steps. First of all, we send the sensor into the force mode. Then we pull the measurement complete flag and then finally, we read the values out at line 611. We read out all the data values. There are eight 8-bit eight data values to be read out. Now, this is perhaps the easiest of the I squared C functions because we're going to read eight data values from the result registers. And the result registers start at address F7. Let's have a quick look at that in the data sheet. So here are the result registers in yellow, starting from address F7. We're going to read them into a read buff. We set up the transfer struct and then call the I squared C master transfer non-blocking. And we send the transfer struct to the I squared C peripheral. We wait for the data to be complete. And then we just need to assemble the eight 8-bit eight values into the three 32-bit results. So here are the three raw values, pressure, temperature, and humidity that have been read and assembled from the sensor. They're each unsigned in 32s. And these now need to be passed into the compensation functions to be converted into hectopascals, degrees centigrade, and percentage humidity. Each of the compensations is done with a separate function, compensate temperature, compensate humidity, and compensate pressure. I just implemented the double precision float algorithm from the Bosch sensor data sheet and that's described in appendix A and Bosch of Hanley provided the algorithm. Well lastly let's watch that all in action. I'm going to run the code with F8 and we'll see the output from the sensor 
printed into the console window. So here we are. I'm in just outside London. The temperature is 28 degrees, quite warm for this time of year. And uh, it's quite rainy outside. So we have low pressure, 996 hectopascals. Well, that completes the demo. There is a little extra video this week. I'm going to show you how to use a real-time clock driver on the OKDo E1 board featuring the LPC55 S69 and show you how we can use the real-time clock to trigger a measurement of the sensors every minute. Well, I trust that you're enjoying these videos. And if you do, you can support me by sharing it, by liking these videos and subscribing to my YouTube channel. That's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.